One of the things that you guys ask me quite often, of course, is things related to, to gear. What camera do I use, the lens combination, the camera bag, that kind of stuff. The other question that I get quite often, to my surprise, it's related to what to wear when you are photographing, doing street photography, especially when you are doing uh, street photography overseas, when you are traveling around. What kind of clothes uh, you wear. And I have to say here that I'm not an expert and I didn't understand, to be honest, the question at the beginning because I don't think that I use anything too different or too strange. But thinking about it for a moment and talking with some of the colleagues as well, it started to make sense. You know, this video is going to be a little bit for fun. I don't think that it's really important what we're going to talk about here. And of course, everything that I'm going to say is my opinion. There is nothing wrong with any kind of clothes that people use or feel comfortable using. That's important to say, because what it's really important here is how we develop our eye and our style and, and have experiences doing pictures and so on. That being said, you ask me. So I'm going to try to explain what I use, what I wear uh, and why, because there are some things that I do find in interesting to talk about. And also I will show you what combination of gear do I use, whereas if I'm going to uh, do an assignment for a magazine or if I'm going to do something that is more personal or maybe when I'm, I'm going to host a workshop where I need a little bit less things. And also we show you what camera uh, bags do I use and how do, how do I change them and what's the reason behind all of that stuff. So if you are not interested in this fashion stuff that we're going to talk at the beginning, you can skip towards the middle of the video where I suppose that I will start to talk about the gear part of it. But if you are interested and Hopefully, if you are, you will find something useful. Let's go for it. So I was saying that it started to make sense to me, this question of what to wear when you are working, when you are out and about taking pictures. And, and that's because I have seen, and I've seen it in YouTube, in the streets, in, in different places in, in the world, how people use their own uniform, the photographer's uniform kind of thing, which is normal again. And I identify, probably you guys can feel related to that, um, two or three types of, of street travel photographers. The first one, which is something that we see a lot, especially on YouTube, is this New York Soho street photographer, uh, which is quite fashionable. Um, they wear like uh, the last trend in clothes with the beanies and the strange sneakers and all of that. And, and that's fantastic. I have to say that any kind of self-expression, um, I'm a big fan. And if something that you wear uh, makes you feel good and, and confident, so go for it. There is no, there is no problem for me um, in that sense. What happens with that kind of with that kind of appearance, if you like, is that when you go out those, those circles, you start to stand out a little bit, right? The same thing happens with the other type of street photographer within cities, especially the big cities like New York, London, and that kind of thing, which is a little bit more old school, I would say, which is the all black clothes kind of ninja, <laughs> if that makes sense. And, and I understand why because the whole point of, of wearing all black is to somehow conceal the camera, be discreet, not to have loud colors and, and that kind of thing. But it happens a little bit the same thing when you are out of the circle where you are not, not noticeable because of that, you stand out again. The third type, it's more something that you see overseas when you are traveling around different countries, um, which is the commando type. It's the cargo pants with huge backpack, um, hiking boots, all, all, all that stuff. The hat, the best even, I've seen them. Um, 
And again, if you feel that wearing all of that stuff uh, makes you feel happy and confident, go for it. But if you think that you are going to be discreet using all of that stuff, you will not. Uh, nothing happens. It's not really a problem. It's just what it is, I think. What I wear, I wear it in a sense that I try to look as normal as possible, whatever that means. Uh, normal probably is not the word. I would say it's, it's to be regular, to be discreet, um, average, uh, something like that. So the point of this is not really to blend in or to be mistaken by a local. I think that you cannot really do that because your wanderer's gaze, the camera you're carrying, you have a certain body language when you are working because you are focusing on things and try to uh, find interesting corners and stuff to, to the pictures. That gives you away, basically. But if you are a little bit more quote-unquote conservative uh, um, dressing, let's say, using stuff that everybody else in the world uses, uh, for example, you are going to feel more approachable. And one of the things that I find interesting about that is that if you get into a situation where you need to have access to things or you get an encounter with someone that's not really sure why you're taking pictures, how you present yourself is going to affect uh, that interaction somehow. In my case, I'm going to start from the most obvious part, which is what everybody talks about when they recommend how to do a street photography is a small camera and a good pair of shoes. So let's talk shoes. The obvious approach would be to wear trainers or sneakers, right? Because that's comfortable. You can walk around a lot and that kind of thing, which is true. And there is no doubt about it. But in my particular case, I prefer um, a good pair of boots, not hiking boots or like commando boots or anything like that. I like these kind of boots that are like um, chaka boots, desert-like boots, something that is nicely built uh, that can um, absorb the weather. If it's raining, I don't want to have my, my feet wet and I want to keep working, that kind of thing. Also, because of my kind of work and my kind of approach to street and travel photography, I'm not necessarily all the time in a city. So I want something that is a little bit more tough, if that makes sense, than, than sneakers. And I'm aware that I'm trading a little bit of comfort for uh, having something a little bit more resistant to the elements and that kind of thing. But I think that there are plenty of brands around where you can find a good fit for you. Beyond that, if we go up, uh, would be the trousers. Again, I look for something that everybody can use or use everywhere where I, everywhere I go. And that would be jeans. Of course, there are other uh, fabrics that are going to be more breathable, more practical and all, all that kind of stuff. But jeans, you know, do you have thinner ones for summer, um, thicker ones for winter? And I'm talking here uh, I'm generalizing you know, more mild winters and mild summers. I'm not talking about extreme weather or anything like that, right? So jeans are available everywhere. Everybody wears them. So you're not going to stand out because of your, of your pants or trousers. So jeans would be my choice. Going up, um, one of the things that I'm a big fan, and here there's a little bit more of an intention behind, would be the button shirt. I like to wear button shirts because I think that they are quite versatile. Um, you have the same thing. You have for summer, you can have linen um, shirts or, or uh, cotton or wool shirts for winter kind of thing. But what I look for in those shirts are going to be one or two uh, front pockets. First of all, because when I'm walking around, when I'm uh, working in the streets. I don't like to carry too many stuff. I don't like to have my pockets full of things. And, and I, if I can, I will wear a smaller camera bag. Therefore, in the front pockets, what I'm going to wear is probably going to be something like the lip balm, uh, a lens cloth, something like that. Since some years ago, and this is more like an anecdote, I was covering 
uh, an event in New York. I think it was Veteran Days, and I was inside the the thing, right, where you have you need uh, spare an access. You have you need to show to to the police a press pass and and that kind of stuff, which I which I have, right. So this cop uh, comes to me and asks me for my for my accreditation. So I reach out my back pocket, in my in my in my jeans, and I show him. Say, oh, that's fine. Uh, we chit chat for a moment, and, and before leaving, he said, hey, "You know what? It would be smart for you to carry your accreditation in a front pocket, in the jacket or in the shirt, because someone else, or another cop, or maybe a bad guy, could think that you have a gun, and that's bad business." Told me, and since then, uh, when I have to carry my accreditation, which is not really often, it's just sometimes i carry also my accreditation in the front pocket of my shirt uh, just in case uh, sometimes uh, especially with assignments you have to deal with with cops with uh, with military in, in different places and, and i think that it's nice to avoid any kind of misunderstanding so uh, that's one of the reasons that in the shirts i look for these front pockets if i'm going to wear a jacket which, which is something I usually do, uh, unless it's super hot or, or I need something w way thicker because of the winter. Again, we're talking about mild weather. I'm going to use some kind of trucker jacket or a Harrington jacket, which is widely used. Everybody uses this kind of stuff um, all over the world. Again, uh, is, is widely used and there is plenty of options that you can choose for. Um, there's plenty of options, different colors. Um, one of the things that I, that I want to mention about it is that I tend to use plain colors. No logos, no loud colors either, of course. I, I'm i going to do uh, blues, greens, uh, browns, um, that, that kind of thing, black sometimes. Uh, that would be the palette if we are going to talk fashion. Um, so that would be the part of the what I wear and why. And the only thing that is not really related with fashion, but I think that is interesting to, to have in an account, is the wristwatch. I use wristwatches. I have been using them for all my life. Um, I, I got used to it, so it would be weird for me not to use one. But there's a practical side of it as well. I believe that when you are in the streets, you have to be present. It's one of the most beautiful aspects of our photography is that we have to be there to do it. We have to be present, we have to experience what we are uh, photographing and all that stuff. And there's nothing more distracting than the phone. But of course, you sometimes need to know what time it is. Therefore, instead of going to look for the phone, you can do a quick glance to the wrist and you, you know what time it is and maybe you have to go for lunch or whatever it is, and that's it. If you are going to use a watch, I would suggest to use something that is not very expensive. Maybe you have a collection. Um, I wouldn't use a fancy watch, for example, when I'm walking around and working. Um, but there are plenty of options. I use most of the time something like a field watch. So it's very small with one of these NATO straps that is super comfortable and, and breathable. Uh, but you can uh, find uh, options with uh, G-Shocks from Casio, that kind of, there's plenty of options. But the point of it would be definitely not to get distracted with the phone, right? Because it's really distracting. So it's suddenly maybe you are uh, in the zone taking great pictures and you have these notifications that you get distracted. So you're losing the reality and that makes you lose pictures. Okay, let's talk gear. I'm going to start with the kind of bag that I use. I'm usually I'm going to carry usually a couple of bags. One one of them is going to be uh, the bigger one, which is not really very big, but is is the bigger one where I carry everything photographically that I need. That is going to be um, this donkey bag or or a wooden seven liter kind of thing where I have my two bodies couple of lenses, maybe three lenses, the charger, um, passport, all that stuff I carried in the in, in those bags. 
And I'm going to separate how I use the bags depending on the, on the job that I have to do. For example, if I'm going to do a personal work, a body of work, if I'm going to have the time to explore and to be low pace and, and wander around, uh, what I'm going to use is probably just one body because I usually carry, I travel with two bodies and two or three lenses uh, at the same time. But in this personal approach, I'm going to carry with me in the streets one of the two bodies um, and a small camera bag where I'm going to put maybe hand sanitizer, perhaps another lens. Um, and I'm going to try to use that most of the time and carry another lens because maybe I want to change for that particular project. I want to do maybe some portraits or something like that. But I try to be as lightweight as I can. Basically, often even I go just with a camera, nothing else. For that approach, the personal one, the combination that I use is usually uh, going to be, in Fuji speaking, uh, a 23, which would be a 35 equivalent and a 50. Most of the time I'm going to use one or the other, but I might change depending on the situation and, and the context, right? But the point is that I'm going to use only one camera. The other one is going to stay in the hotel just in case uh, the main one breaks or something like that. And, and I have to change. When I'm doing a commission or assignment for a magazine or something like that, I'm going to probably need to carry more stuff. Usually what happens is that in that occasion, I carry both bodies, both cameras, with one lens in each mounted, right? In that, in that situation, it will depend on the kind of assignment that I'm doing. But a good combination to me would be something like uh, having a 35 or a 23 uh, in one of the bodies and in the other one something a little bit longer, like an 85 or a 56 would be in Fuji speaking, right? So what's going to happen in that situation is that probably I will carry the bigger bag as well because I will need to have uh, more batteries, maybe the day is going to be long and I need to carry water. And, and more things like that. I also always carry a notebook, uh, especially because sometimes you need a signature, you need the model release, or maybe you want to put down some notes that will be interesting to have in the future. And, and I have that as well. Uh, the point is that I'm going to choose beforehand what I'm going to use, right? Um, that being said, I would say that most of my work, most of my body of work, unless it's something very specific, like I have to go to do a safari or I have to cover some maneuvers of the military, something like that, is going to be with a, with a 35 or 50. In, in my particular case, I use the X-Pro bodies. I have an X-Pro 3 and an X-Pro 2. Um, I use those cameras because I, I like the, how they operate. I like the image quality. I like that they are not um, very unintrusive. They are, uh, they are quite polite with people. And I think that they are fast enough and good enough weather seal to be in a working condition as well. I, it's not super problematic if, it's, if it rains or if I have to, to use them several hours at a time, batteries, because of the optical viewfinder, I think that it lasts a little bit longer, which is, is something I find very cool. And the format itself, to me, is something that works. It's not that you are going to do better pictures with that camera, it's that, for me, it, it works. Um, and I've been using the X-Pro line of cameras for, for a number of years now. Well, in terms of, of technology, I would say that, in my opinion, I'm not doing sports or anything like that. Therefore, most of these new features that camera allows you to, to use, I don't use them to start. So I can afford to wait longer until I have to replace my camera. If that means actually, I tend to use them until they break. And then if that happens, uh, would I search and I see which one would be the next uh, best option if, if they don't make these kind of cameras anymore. Or maybe I buy a new one in second hand or something like that. 
And, and that would be it. If you have any question or any doubt about it, send, put a comment in the, in the video and, and share with me your fashion tips if you want. That could be an interesting conversation. As I said, uh, please, this is not, this is not important. It's, it's something that can be somewhat useful if you like, but definitely is something that is not important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, of course, I would say that it's better to dress or to use the things in a way that makes you feel comfortable and confident and makes you want to go out to take pictures and have experiences that the clothes itself. Uh, we all have our own um, perks and things that we prefer for different reasons. And there's no problem with that. So I hope you find helpful and a little bit fun this uh, episode and I want to finish saying that as we already established this whole thing of gear, camera bags, uh, clothes, boots and that kind of thing is not the most important thing. The most important thing are the stories that we can tell and I'm going to use this episode to explain to you that we have in our community, we are about 260 members in, within the Raw Society. Every, every year, some of you might know, we put together this magazine. It's more like a book than a magazine. And what we try to do with it is to propose stories um, among the photographers in the community to you, the audience. And it's going to be you who will decide which story are going to be published in the next issue of the magazine. All the stories are already in the website, so I will put the, the link in the description. And if you can support this endeavor with $10, $50, $100, whatever you want, you will become part of this movement of believing in photography and storytelling and doing it carefully and with care. So please, if you have the time, visit the website and check if some of the stories say something to you, make a pledge. Whatever that, that is, it will be helpful.